So welcome back. And today we're going to work on creating pre-recorded lessons to have available to students in the in the um, if by chance the student either misses the core, the virtual synchronous lesson or if they're having issues with accessing the Zoom links. So you want to have a pre-recorded lesson. Um, so what we're going to do is <clears throat> because our district is really promoting Schoology and really wants us to use it. I have embedded our training in our Schoology. And in fact, I created a Schoology course that I want you to go to. So at the top where it says courses, you're going to choose courses. You're going to go to the right where it says my courses. And click on that. And then you're going to join a course. Click on join a course and it will uh, put this up. So I'm going to go back and I want to show you what the course number is. <clears throat> so in your courses, if you go all the way to the bottom on the left, it will show you your course code. So I want you to take a few seconds, pause the recording and type this in. OK, so now you've typed this in and you should be in the course. The course is called A2E2 Schoology uh, Professional Learning. And um, the first thing you'll see is the deposit the materials page and it has my student checklist. And in the student checklist, what I've done is when I click over here, you can actually see the student checklist. Um, I've embedded today's training in this student checklist. So what we're going to do is we're going to outline the process of creating these pre-recorded um, lessons. And at the end of this, I want you to go be able to go in and go to Schoology and embed your your pre-recorded lesson. Um, we're going to first talk about uh, the three different three different types of applications you can use to record your videos. There are many different types of applications that are uh, available to you, but I'm only talking about three of them and I'm only using one of them today. So I'm really going to focus on that one. Um, then after that, you're going to choose which you, I want you to explore. You can pause the video and explore these different types of um, applications once we talk about them. But then you're going to choose whichever one you want and you're going to pre-record your you're going to create your pre-recorded lesson. When you pre uh, when you do that, after that, we're going to have you upload that and put the link to this in the student checklist and added the link to your Schoology course. And I'll even show you um, how to add the link to your um, to your Zoom. It's the same process. At the end of this, this is why I want you to be in this course, the actual Schoology course. I would like for you to go to this exit ticket and click on it and go to the Google form. I want to do a survey. So possibly for people to earn credit for, for doing this. But just so I can get some feedback for did this help? Which one of these applications did you uh, did you utilize? How did they go for you? Okay. And if you notice the bottom of this checklist, I have the step by step process. And one more thing, I cannot stress this enough. I've been sharing this uh, this document at the bottom of the step by step process is a link. There is a document that was created that has a compilation of all the schools you course uh, trainings, a lot of the school you trainings that have been offered the zoom trainings and Google trainings or things that we think that you may be encountering. And it has step by step instructions, but most importantly, it has videos for each one of these different endeavors you're doing. So you can click on here. You can keep that uh, document at at the ready whenever you need it. OK, so let's go back to our course. <clears throat> if you notice underneath, I've also added the those same instructions here and it has a couple of links. It has a, a link to the video on how to embed a student checklist. And it has, once again, this link down here. And if you scroll down, it actually has the survey embedded here. So please, before you leave, I mean, once you finish, complete the survey so we can have that. So let's talk about the three different platforms, the three different recording applications that I think are very useful. One of the ones that is Big in the district, I've seen a lot of educators use it, is Screencast Omatic. And the other two is Screencastify and Loom. So let's talk about Screencast Omatic first. So I'm going to go and type this in Screencast 
Google is great. <laughs> it will predict what you're trying to say. So, um, so when I put it in Google in the search engine, it brings me to this. So I click on Screencast-O-Matic. Now um, I'm going to log out. When I have to go and log in and I'm dealing with my uh, job, I tend to use the, the, the Soto's email. So in this case, I can log in and then I can create, I can sign in with my Google, uh, the Soto Google um, email. And it, and it logs me in, creates an account for me. And it's important that whatever you use, be consistent with it because a lot of times it links those videos to that same account. So you want to make sure that you are able to go back and retrieve anything at any point. Up to the right, it has a few options for you. You can actually do a, a screen capture or a screenshot. You can do that anyway. You don't need this application to do that. You can just use, you know, the Windows button and screen, print screen. <laughs> but this is how you get the recording. You will have to click on launch recorder and then it's going to require you to download their application. This is why I don't use Screencast-O-Matic because I don't really like to have a whole bunch of stuff uh, that I have to download and save onto my hard drive it, because I have a tendency to run out a lot of uh, run out of space very quickly. Even on my phone, it's craziness. So I prefer not to use these kind of applications, but a lot of people use it, and a lot of people have a good great success with it. So if you do not mind having um, to download screencast or matic the application onto your hard drive this is a good tool to use and it has uh, and it actually has the ability give you the ability to edit your videos also so that's the first one i'm not going to go any more into that you can you can pause the video and go and explore in fact i suggest you to do that um the second one the second two they're actually what we call google chrome add-ons i pretty much work out of Chrome because a lot of my um, things that I work in are Google applications and Chrome is a Google based whatever <laughs> web browser. So um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put in Chrome add-on. Some of you guys may be familiar with Chrome add-ons because if you look at the top right, these are all Chrome add-ons. In fact, this is the one uh, add-on that I'm using right now. Um, and I'm going to click on this. And if I'm if I'm looking for something, um, in this case, Screencastify, I can just put it in the search engine, and it comes up. And if you see that it says I've added it, so it it um, I've actually had this as a uh, add-on, and I can go and confirm it by going up to the top right, going to this little puzzle piece. It, it lists all my extensions and you see right here is a screencastify is already one of my um <clears throat> my extensions so but if you don't have this and you probably don't click on this and here's what I, what i suggest you do do not just blindly start downloading things or or, or linking your <laughs> accounts to stuff what they have in these chrome um add-ons is they have videos look at the video first then go up here and look at the reviews and you'll see what people think about it. And not with any product, not everyone's going to be happy. You never find, you really find 100% satisfaction. But you need to be able to understand our, um, what are some of the hangups of the application. Because anything that's, that's free is not going to, is not going to be, there's going to be some problems or there's some, there will be limitations. Um, so Screencastify is a beautiful application. Um, in fact, let me go to that. <clears throat> so when I go to Screencastify, it has me sign in. Like I said, I sign in with my Google. With my DeSoto because it's I'm doing I'm doing work. <laughs> That's what I'm using it for. And it requires me to set up and do permissions and stuff, okay? So um you can sell I haven't used this before, so I'm not going to go in and waste the time to, to set it up right now. Um, but you can you can go in. The second thing that we're, the last one that we want to look at is called Loom. And that's what I'm using right now. I'm very familiar with Loom. I, I don't know if Screencastify or Screen Matic 
<laughs> screencast of matic I'm sorry, y'all. Um, if they are good or bad, but I've used Loom and Loom works well for me. So I tend to stick with what works well. So it is one of my extensions. Like I said, it is the one that I'm using. That's why it's the this, this button is going in and out because I'm using it. And um, but it too, what I want you to do is I want you to make sure that you go in and you look at the video and then you check the reviews and you see whether or not it's one something that you want to use. Now, when I am trying to do a video, um, we're going to go in and we're going to explore Loom a, a Loom a little bit more because I can show you what that looks like because I'm on it. Um, but when I'm about to do a video, what I have to also decide, not only do I need to figure out what recording application I'm going to use, but I need to decide what I'm going to project on my screen. So if you look at this right now, I'm projecting my screen and I'm projecting my face. So I'm using a webcam. So you have to decide, are you simply going to project just the screen? Are you simply going to project just the webcam or your face? Don't do that. Or are you going to project both? I project both, not because of vanity, because I do not like to see myself on video or hear my voice. <laughs> but I'm, I'm getting over that. But I do it because there's some science behind it saying that students work better when you showcase your face. Not it just only being your face, but they work better. It's more personalized when they can see who they who you are or they can see you. In, a, in an environment where we start out virtually, it is very important for students who do not know you to see you and likewise for you to see them. It just helps um, the psyche. Additionally, it is good for people to be able to see instructions or see graphics or see stuff. <clears throat> for those students who have a visual um, uh, modality, it is key for them to see. This is me. I can. I like when people explain stuff to me, but sometimes I need to see it in writing. Most of the time, I need to see it in writing. I like to read the words. I like to look at the graphic. I like to look at. I like to see it. In fact, in some training videos, I mute <laughs> the trainer and just read what's on the screen because they're either talking too long or talk too much. Okay. So the first thing in our process is you need to choose which word recording application you want to use. I gave you three of them. Uh, my preference is Loom only because I've been using it for a number of years. You need to determine if you want to project the screen only, webcam uh, or your face only, or both. I suggest you do both. The next thing you need to make sure you do is you need to organize your student checklist. Remember, in our district, the student checklist serves as a lesson plan. And just teaching 101 is the better your lesson plan, the easier it is to execute it. So you do a lot of work ahead of time, planning your lessons, doing all that front loading, because it will make things, it should make things easier as you execute what you're, uh, what you planned out. Okay. So on your student checklist, you need to make sure that you, you're very explicit in your, what the students, what the students need to know and what they need to be able to do any kinds of links, any videos or any external things that you're taking them to, that needs to be in, included in your checklist. And when you project your screen, I suggest instead of getting a power, PowerPoint, unless you have to, because sometimes you need to use a PowerPoint. I love a PowerPoint. It keeps me organized and keeps me focused. But I will suggest that you use Schoology, that you have your student checklist, not uploaded in Schoology, but embedded. If you notice, mine is embedded. Um, if you want to know how to embed your checklist, um, if you scroll down further, it, here's a video that tells you how to embed the checklist. This video is I got from this uh, compilation. And you can go and learn how to embed your student checklist. Because you want the, the students to be able to see it. You want to minimize the number of clicks they have to, ha they have to do in Schoology, because the more clicks they have, the, the more likely they're going to get lost or they're just gonna disconnect, okay? But if it's up there, I see it, I don't have to click on nothing. I can just look and read. I'm more prone to finish whatever it is I need to finish. <clears throat> so, 
So you want to embed your checklist. You want to make sure that your checklist is very clear on what they need to do. And um, you, if I were you, I will project it. And as you're going through your checklist, then you can kind of project. Like if, if I have a video that I want them to look at and I'm doing a complete lesson, I'm going to go through my checklist. And if the video is embedded, uh, uh, is um, linked, is in the what to do section, I'm going to go through the instructions and then I'm going to click on the video through the student checklist so they can see how what they need to do. You are modeling to them how to read this student checklist. Do not assume that people know exactly what they need to do with regard to this, this document. So as much as possible, model to them the proper way of utilizing this document. So have this projected, have the checklist in it, go to read through this or, or go through this and then click on the links as you're, you're explaining things. OK. So then you're going to go to uh, the next step is record your stuff. OK. Um, now, I'm going to show you what happens when you record a loom on using loom. So when I'm recording doing loom, I need to go to um, at the end, it's going to send me to its website, loom.com. And here's my website. It takes me to my personal library. And it typically it's going to have the video up. And you see how many videos I have. I have a lot of videos. <laughs> I've been doing this for a while. <laughs> okay. And so I'm going to go to one of the videos here. Click on that. This is the screen that it sends you to once you finish recording your video. And if you notice, if you notice, automatically it has a link to it. Because it now has a site, essentially. It has a web page. So I could, if, 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 not, if I do nothing else, I can just copy this link. But it is the best practice to look at the video first. It's going to tell me how long the video is. Um, and it wants to, it's going to um, tell me a number of things. It's going to default to whatever the name I have on the document or whatever. It's going to have some kind of name. You can always uh, click on it and rename it. It's going to allow you to uh, download it to your hard drive if you want to. Um, you can duplicate the video if you want to. I don't know why. You can trash it if you don't like it. You can put it to a folder. But most importantly, you can trim it. I have a tendency to ramble. <laughs> and so sometimes I feel as though, okay, let me take all those, that, that extra five minutes off. <laughs> or I just realize as I'm looking at the video, because you need to look at it, that I, that latter part, I don't need to add there. I need, in fact, I need to do that uh, uh, separately. So I can, I can do that. And it has a few other actions that you can do. But I'm going to copy my link. <clears throat> so now that I've copied my link, I can go to my student checklist. And if I wanted to, I can add this link to one of the sections of my checklist. I'm going to put link. And then I'm going to highlight. I have two options. I can right click and then go to link or I can go up to insert and go down to link. It's either one. It doesn't matter. It's the same result. And then I paste my link in. Now, that's great if technology is working. And technology works most of the time. Sometimes, though, what you need to do is, I would suggest you do this on a regular basis, but sometimes technology doesn't work the way that it's supposed to. So I would suggest you copy and paste that link um, in your screen, uh, on your, um, on your um, student checklist, because sometimes it, when, sometimes it doesn't work. So if it's here, though, I can just highlight this, copy it, paste it in the um in the and paste it and then it's going to send me to it's going to send a child to that um video okay um so that's a good place to put it but i also want to put this on my schoology okay so what i want to do is i i have it in my student checklist and, be, and because i have this in google when i add it to google it um i can up um, I can refresh this. I should be able to go here and refresh this also if my internet is, is going at a proper pace. <laughs> and it should upload, uh, refresh this and have that information. Yep, it has a link in there. Okay. 
That's why you should have it on Google, people, because it's a live document. You can always make changes. But now I want to go and I want to add a material. I want to add my link to my uh, pre-recorded video. So I go down to add file link external tool. <clears throat> and I can go here, go to link. I can put here, I can um, paste that uh, link in and then I can put right here, this will be um, free recorded um, lesson. But you wanna put the name of the pre-recorded lesson. The pre-recorded lesson, uh, we can say, um, so types, if we're not talking about sales, and then I'll put in parentheses, a uh, pre-recorded lesson, you know, whatever. It doesn't really matter. I mean, it matters for you, but not to me right now. <laughs> so I add it. Whenever you add a material, it puts the material at the very bottom of that page. So I need to go back um, to the bottom and then I'm going to drag it all the way to the top because I want them to be able to see it. I have a lot on my page with my student um, checklist, so I'm gonna just put it at the very top. What I wanna add above that though is I want to add, I wanna add my Zoom link because preferably I want the students to actually be present during the Zoom call. So I need to go back to my, um, to my um, student checklist and copy that URL address. I'm going to paste this URL here because that's my Zoom link. And then I'm going to say, um, join me on my Zoom at 10, whatever. Now, remember, every time I add a material, it places the material at the very bottom. So I need to go back down. So I have a lot of stuff on this page. And I'm just going to drag this up. All the way to the top. I'm gonna I'm going to put it above the pre-recorded video because remember, I would prefer them they be in my Zoom call because I'm explaining stuff in my Zoom call. <laughs> so I put that at the top. So if I'm a student or a parent and I'm coming into this page, the first thing I see is a Zoom link. Love it. And it tells me the time. Oh, okay. So I need to be at so they need to be in this at 10 o'clock. And then um, it has the uh, the actual pre-recorded lesson. So maybe I missed the 10 o'clock or I just, it wasn't working because technology does that. I can click on here. And if I, um, I uh, look, I will notice that it's also in my student checklist. Now I need to put on here pre-recorded. I need to put more than just link, okay? Pre-recorded um, lesson. So what you're going to do is you're going to pause this video and you're going to go through the process. You will, you've already explored the applications, you've chosen one, you did whatever you need to do to register for it. You have your updated student checklist. You're going to make sure that you embed it in your Schoology course. You're going to create your lesson, your pre-recorded lesson using the application that you, you preferred, you decided upon. And then um, you're going to, if it is a situation in which it allows you to just, it gives you a link, you're going to embed that link in your student checklist, figure out where you want to put it at. It's up to you. Um, make sure you're consistent though, wherever you put it this time, it needs to pretty much be consistent um, with that every time. So the student knows exactly where to go. You're going to um, create a link for, with that, with that link to your pre-recorded, and you're going to attach your um, your Zoom link also. So this is how what I should see if I were to go into your Schoology page: Zoom link, pre-recorded link, and your link in your um, your your student checklist. So let's see this. Let's just say that you had an application. You chose one of these things that doesn't require doesn't create a link. Instead, it requires you to download your um, your recorded lesson onto your hard drive. So if that's the case, what you need to do is when you're looking at your hard drive, you need to determine where do you want to hold your recordings. I would 
Because I, I think, okay, I'm, I'm going to forget everything. So I need to do use common sense kind of thing. So I know if it's a recording, it's a video. So I would house it in videos. That's just what I do because I tend to forget stuff. So I go common sense stuff. I'm going to have a videos. And I'm going to create in my videos a folder that says Zoom recordings. And I'm going to make sure that when I download my Zoom recordings, I'm going to download it into this folder. And then I'm going to have another folder that's going to say something like um, pre-recorded lessons. And every time I have to download my um, pre-recorded lessons, I'm going to put it in these in this particular file folder, so I know where it is. Consistency is really key. Consistency for the students and consistency for yourself. It will save your life if you're just doing things just haphazardly. You're going to be stressed out because you're not going to remember where anything go. OK. If by chance I have to download it, there's two different options because I can't put a link now. So what I can do is I can go to add materials. And I can um, add, I can upload it into a page. I can upload it into an assignment if I wanted to. In fact, you can like if you know you're going to do like a, um, um, my son, sometimes his teachers has go to the they, they have like a, four questions and they'll just put the four questions. But what they could have done is they could have created an assignment. They could have said, um, I have to add this. They could have um, had an answer for following questions. One is the sky. Ooh, I don't know any questions. And then some, you know, whatever the questions, but they could have added the pre-recorded video ahead of it. So uh, above it. So I'm going to put my video here. So I don't, um, I didn't download it, <laughs> right? I did download it. So I'm going to go and um, go to image. I'm going to pretend as if I did download it. So I go to attach file. And I'm just going to choose a video I have in my, or on my hard drive. There you go, one. And it takes a, while, a second to, um, to upload this. So I'm going to uh, pause my video while it uploads. Okay, so it uploaded and it gives me this yellow rectangle. This is fine. I'm going to put up here pre-recorded. You know why I keep using this pre-recorded video? Because I want to be consistent in the, the terms and the terminology that I use. I'm going to put that, bold that here. And then uh, I'm going to put down here, instructions. Plus, this actually adds a little bit of some sum in this. Okay. So um, now I could do the same thing for the video if I wanted to embed the video. Um, you you just go uh, up here in image media, and you uh, will go to from the web media, and then embed. If you have the embed code, put the embed code. Let me see if I can get it. I don't know where the embed code is on here. So um, the link may or may not work, but um, you could do that. You can do it. You can do it multiple ways. If the beautiful thing about Schoology is you can pretty much, as long as you have an embed code, you can put it anywhere and you can upload things and you can save links. There's, there's many things you can do. Um, you can put a due date. I'm going to need to put a category since I made this. Um, I'll take this. Y'all enable the comments. Disable this and disable the comments because that's confusing students. People, the students are putting their answers in the comments instead of actually submitting their assignments. And then I create. And remember, whenever I add a material, it goes all the way to the bottom. So I have to go to the bottom and I need to drag it up <clears throat> to the top. Well, I'm not going to drag it to the top. I'm going to drag it here. Okay, and then when I go into this, it shows me the video here. Now, sometimes it's going to require the, kid, the, the, the student to download it. I don't like that. I don't like when it downloads stuff to the hard drive. But sometimes it does show the actual video, and then um, they can click on it and look at it and then answer the questions. 
in their submissions. Okay. So it's, it's, it's not a hard, it's not hard to do. It's a good option. Instead of just having some questions, you can have a video that's attached to the questions and it's easy um, for the students to refer to. So let's review. <clears throat> we looked at some recording applications. We talked about whether you should have it the screen only, webcam only, or both. We discussed the importance of organizing your student checklist and having everything, all the content the students are expected to um, understand or to know, and the tasks they need to complete, any kind of links that you are expecting them to, um, to utilize, all the stuff is embedded. We talked about the importance of embedding your student checklist in Schoology. And I told you, if you're in the course, you need to click on this and you can actually see how to do that. It's simply embedding how to embed a document in Schoology. That's all it is, um, a Google document. Uh, create, you are going to, you should have created your recording or following this video, you will create your recording. If you had to save it onto a hard drive, we talked about that, be consistent where you place it in your, in your hard drive. Um, and if you just, uh, if it was an application that allowed you to just capture a link, we talked about that, you're going to um, go back and embed that link in your school, um, in your student checklist, um, and also embed a link that they can access that's around the student checklist where they can clearly see this the pre is the pre recorded lesson. We talked about actually doing the same thing for your zoom link. So it's easy to see that this is my zoom link. It happens at this time for clarity. Okay. Clarity is the key. <laughs> um, so, and then we also talked about uh, if by chance you had to download it onto your hard drive, you can simply just either add it to, add the, upload it into an assignment, which is preferable, preferable, or you can do as I did uh, with this and upload it as a Google, um, as a uh, page. Okay, and you can always upload this page. Um, and hopefully that helps. If you need further assistance with Anything Schoology related, Zoom related, or Google training, Google related, you need to access this uh, document, go to it, it, has a wealth of information on there. Please, before you, um, once you leave this, once you complete this um, recording, go to the Schoology course and complete the Google training, I mean, training uh, survey. <laughs> Thank you very much. I hope this helps.